Thanks for tuning in. This is episode number 225. Thank you for taking the time to join me on this episode. Um, So I want to share just a brief portion of Scripture, and um, I'm always just in awe, I guess is is a right word, of how God will take something I've seen so many times, and he'll open it up to me in in such a way that it's just this epiphany, this this uh, powerful revelation in the moment. Um, it may seem just small and obvious in many in many cases to many different people. But I just I'm I'm so thankful for how he just continuously does this in as I you know spend time in his word and seek to understand and discover these treasures that he makes available. So in this particular one, I want to just point out some thoughts and some uh, observations for you, and I hope that it's uh, impactful to you. It's uh, we're going to be reading in the book of Luke chapter 10, and um, a few verses here, starting in verse 25. And so it says, Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, You have given the right answer. Do this, and you will live. Now, that completes this portion in verse 28. Um, So, just to kind of um, expand a little on the scene that we find ourselves in, um, perhaps you're not um, so familiar with this portion of Scripture yourself. Um, we find this lawyer, or um, it, it may be rendered in different ways in the translation that you're reading. This particular one is out of the New Revised Standard Version, um, but... Um, nonetheless, I want to say a teacher of the law is where what I recall from other translations. I could be misremembering that, but this um, educated, we'll say, individual uh, stands up. But notice the posture that he takes with Jesus. He stands up to test Jesus. So there is a... a there is a sense of um, a pride, I, I think would be fair to say. Um, he, he wants to see what Jesus is made of. Um, and just the idea that this person, this individual, thinks that they contain understanding that um, somehow can stand over or or judge um, this this man named Jesus is a ludicrous thought in itself I mean this this is God in the flesh and this individual is is standing here questioning Jesus to test him to see, what knowledge he has, or what answer he would give. Um, And so he says, Teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Now, for you and I, who have been exposed to much of the gospel and the message of uh, salvation 
uh, by faith, uh, um, by grace through faith, it is, it's very easy for us to look at this question and, and think, well, that's, you know, this is obvious. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Uh, that would be by faith in Jesus Christ through the grace of God. Um, believe in what, in what and who Jesus is, what he's done. And so we kind of expect an answer of, of something similar to this, but it's, it's interesting here. Jesus responds back to this man in a question. And, and I think th- this is a, I think an important strategy that we should employ in our lives is don't be so quick to answer questions, but perhaps explore them further or uh, respond in, in a question, a an exploring question. I think this is a a very valuable thing that we could learn from this approach. Um, but Jesus poses the question back to this individual. What is written in the law? What do you read there? I think another translation says, um, how do you interpret it or how do you understand it? And so this man responds back. You sh- he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all of with all of your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. In another place, we'll find it's that it's written that Jesus assigns these two as the most important commandments, um, and he says, "Which which is the greatest commandment?" And Jesus responds back to this individual who asks this question and says, uh, "To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength." And the and the second one is like it: love your neighbor as yourself. And so those are connected here and in that place that it is written for that scripture. But when Jesus says this. Um, this, I mean, I'm sorry, when the man responds with that answer, Jesus actually commends him by saying, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. Now, if, if you're anything like me, when you, when you see this, it might be kind of, in a way, a little offensive because you're, this is not, um, this is not what we would hear in our churches. If someone came up to us, um, we or asked the question, "How, how, how do I inherit eternal life?" Well, there's only one way to inherit eternal life. Uh, you know, for by grace are you saved through faith, not of yourselves, not of works, lest anyone could boast. And so. It's fascinating that Jesus gives this response. And this is kind of where this just moment of revelation comes in coming across this verse. The man responds to the question, how do I inherit eternal life? By loving the Lord your God with all of your heart, basically with all that's in you, with all of your ability, heart, soul, mind, strength, body, everything in you to love the Lord. And then also to love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus says in that elsewhere place that all of the law and the prophets are summed up in these two commandments. And so you would expect a different answer to be commended, not this answer. However, to to more deeply understand what these two commandments carry, to love the Lord 
with everything in you and to love your neighbor, if you can rightly um, fulfill those two com- those two laws, those two statements, then you you can in them inherit eternal life. Well, here's the problem. We are unable to perfectly and um, consistently execute those two commandments. So, how do I inherit eternal life? Well, you uphold those two commandments. If you do those, you will inherit eternal life. But that's the, that's the catch, so to speak. You can't. We, um, one of my really uh, f- favorite preachers, Corey Russell, he, he says often, um, it takes God to love God. And I think that's deeply profound because it, it uh, echoes our inability to appropriately love God. We, in, in ourselves, we lack the capacity to appropriately love the Lord our God. And if we have an inability to love the Lord our God, then how can we love others um, if we can't even get the source of all of creation? If we can't love Him rightly, how can we love anyone else? And so that's really the the rub here is you know, God is in the person of Jesus is saying, yes, if you can do these two things, then you will inherit eternal life. But you can't. You're unable to do these. And that is where our need for a Savior comes in. This is our desperate need for Jesus. Because we are unable to do what is necessary to inherit eternal life. And thus, our need for a Savior and for saving. Um, I think that it's... um, There's never been a greater need for us to realize our inability, our... to realize our insufficiency, because it's when we recognize our inability, it's... it, it evokes... Our, our love, our our passion for the one who can uh, bridge the gap, who can make up for our insufficiency, and so I think an awareness, a self awareness, uh, is is so critical um, throughout all the generations, um, especially the generation that we live in today. It's critical that. We um, just ask God to awaken our hearts and our minds uh, to more appropriately, to more accurately um, see ourselves as we are and, and see what He makes available, He, God, makes available to us in Christ. And so it's just, it, it was a wonderful moment of revelation to be reminded that, yes, love the Lord with all of your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. Do those things, and you will inherit eternal life, but you can't. You can't do it. You can't measure up. Um, You can't be good enough. You can't be perfect enough. And that is why you need saving and a Savior. Uh, Thus, in a echoing our desperate need for Jesus. And so I would just encourage you to to chew on this, um, to take a an, an assessment of your ability and more namely your inability and and ask the Lord to 
show you, um, to show you a true reflection of, of who you are and who you can be in him. And if you've never given your heart to Jesus and surrendered your life to his um, right uh, leadership, then I would encourage you to, um, to make that step, that, that, uh, that, f- that faith in what he's made available, to obtain it as yours uh, through his grace um, and doing so by faith. Jesus is uh, the perfect man, the perfect God incarnate, uh, made available to all who would believe, who would come to him. He will turn none away. And in him, by faith, you can lay hold of, of what he's made available uh, by way of his righteousness, um, which is like um, wider than any snow. Um, and he makes our filthy rags of righteousness clean and pure in the sight of our God. So thank you for taking the time with me on this. Um, I pray that it was a a great reminder of what Jesus has done and what he makes available in our inability and insufficiency. And so I bless you. I thank you for being with me, and we'll see you on the next one. God bless. If it means that I'm close to you, I would trade me.